for bangthebook.com, and it's Kyle Hunter. We've got a Thursday Sweet 16 college basketball preview for you. I'm going to break down these Sweet 16 matchups. Obviously, we have less games, so it's easier to talk about each game, talk about it a little bit more in depth. That's what I'll try to do here today. I'm going to be talking about the Friday college basketball Sweet 16 games in a video that will come out tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that one as well. Also, check out everything that's going on at bangthebook.com. Bang the Book Radio Daily, hosted by Adam Burke. Always a great show. Uh, fantastic insight there. You've got bangthebook.com, all the previews you could want, uh, futures information. If you have futures and you're looking to try to hedge, uh, that's a pretty important thing to do this time of the year. You know, if you got some good futures, they're still alive. You want to make sure that you get something out of that. So uh, check out those articles there at bangthebook.com. I have a daily free picks article at bangthebook.com. College basketball free picks every single day. You can check that one out as well. Always lots of stuff going on there at bangthebook.com. I encourage you to check it out. Also subscribe on YouTube to Bang the Book. Get daily videos. Adam Burke does a lot of videos. Brian Blessing does some videos there. And then, of course, my videos as well. So lots of good content from bangthebook.com. I hope everybody's uh, checking it out. And if you haven't already, I encourage you to start doing so. Let's look at these Sweet 16 matchups now. I start out with Florida State and Gonzaga. Gonzaga minus seven and a half as I record this video. 147 the total in this game. Um, you know, I'm going to look at the uh, percentages here as I record this to see. 64% uh, of the bets are on Florida State. Um, the money is uh, pretty similar there. So we've got uh, Florida State getting a, a bit of a public dog look to it. Um, you know, as you look at this game, Florida State beat Gonzaga last year. So Gonzaga has revenge. Florida State's up for this game, though, too. I think you, you should be careful to read too much into it when people say something like, you know, um, Gonzaga has revenge for this game. They're going to be far more motivated. Look, Florida State should care a lot about this game, too. This is a sweet 16. You know, this is not some, uh, you know, regular season game, a non-conference game in November. This is the Sweet 16. Everybody should care here. It depends on how you match up, what kind of coaching you have. Now, who has the coaching advantage here? I would say Gonzaga has the coaching advantage. Mark Few has been a very good coach for so many years. I think Leonard Hamilton, a coach that recruits very well. I like the style of player he recruits and the athletic ability. They're, they're very long and athletic. They're a tough matchup. I don't think he's as good X's and O's wise as Mark Few. I'm not saying Leonard Hamilton's a terrible coach. I don't think he's as good as Mark Few. So, you know, what does it mean here, though? Florida State, I think the key to this game, the single biggest key in this game, Florida State, are they going to be able to take care of the basketball? In their losses, turnovers have been a problem. Uh, they have to take care of the basketball. Gonzaga is very good at taking care of the ball. Usually, I know Florida State's going to trap them, use some full court pressing, try to force some turnovers. Usually, Gonzaga is good at taking care of the basketball. Florida State is mediocre at that. They cannot lose the turnover battle badly here. Um, Florida State really shot the basketball really well against Murray State. I wouldn't expect them to shoot that well again here. They're not really a great shooting team. Let's see who wins the battle on the boards as well. With seven and a half, um, I have to lean toward Florida State here. Like I said, I do think Gonzaga has a coaching advantage. Seven and a half is a lot of points. I think Florida State played a tough schedule throughout the course of the season. Gonzaga is always hurt by the fact they play in the West Coast Conference. I mean. I think Gonzaga probably would have won a national title by now if it weren't for the fact that they play a weak conference and then go and have to play up uh, once you get into the biggest games. I think that's difficult for them. I think Gonzaga probably wins this game. I would lean toward the seven and a half points with Florida State here. Purdue and Tennessee, Tennessee minus one and a half, 146 and a half right now. 64% of the bets are on Tennessee, 80% of the money on Tennessee. Um, you know, Purdue with the best shooting performance of the year so far uh, for them against Villanova. I had Villanova in that game. Couldn't have been more off. You know, I'm always honest about my wins and my losses. Way off on that one. Uh, Purdue looked like a machine in that game. I have a Purdue future. Uh, so my Purdue future is still alive. Uh, one that I took early in the season when they were struggling. But, you know, I'm going to hedge somewhat in this round because this is certainly a difficult matchup. But I don't want to not get anything out of that. Uh, Purdue future. Uh, to me, Purdue is a really dangerous team. 
if Carson Edwards is on, you know, he had that back injury that he was trying to play through and he was shooting poorly many games in a row. And then he comes out and just sets the world on fire in the first half the other night against Villanova. You know, if he shoots like that, Purdue's really, really tough to beat. Um, I think Tennessee is going to game plan for Carson Edwards, try to make somebody else beat him. Obviously, that's what most people do, and it hasn't worked that well. Rick Barnes versus Matt Painter. This is an interesting one because I'm not really high on Matt Painter in the NCAA tournament. I think Matt Painter is a good coach. I don't think he's a great coach. He hasn't proven it in the NCAA tournament yet. But Rick Barnes, not a guy I trust at all in the NCAA tournament. This is a guy that's had really great talent many, many years. He's never made that deep run. So I need him to prove it to me before I can trust him. My lean in this game would be Purdue plus one and a half. I would also lean to the under here. I don't think either of these teams play that fast. This is a game that means a lot. Sweet 16 unders have done pretty well in the long term. Uh, I would lean to the under here and lean to Purdue as well. Oregon versus Virginia. Virginia minus eight and a half. 119 the total. Uh, let's see where the uh, Oregon 60% of the bets, 70% of the money right now. So a little bit of a public dog. I wonder what that one's going to look like as we get closer to the game. Like I said, I'm doing this two days before the game. Wanted to give you as much lead time as we could here. Um, this is a big number to lay on such a low total. Uh, college football, college basketball, same way. Really, you know, basketball or football. It's really hard to lay a lot of points with a low total. Because then you start figuring, man, you know, uh, Virginia could win this game 58 to 50. And that's not really that close of a game for a low scoring game, but it's close enough for you to lose your bet. So uh, it's, it's hard for me to lay the points. I couldn't lay the points here with Virginia. I like Tony Bennett a lot. One of my favorite coaches in the country. Very classy guy. Just a really good coach. Um, you know, as a fan, I'm rooting for Virginia to do well. You know, I, I, I like seeing the 16 seed win last year. but uh, you know, Virginia got a lot of heck for that one. So uh, I'd like to see Virginia do well. I've been a fan of Oregon. Cash the Sweet 16 uh, prop with them to get to the Sweet 16. You know, obviously their road was a little bit easier when UC Irvine won. But this Oregon team's been playing really good basketball here of late. And look, Oregon's defense has been as good as just about anybody in the country here for the last few weeks. If you, if you just take the last few weeks, Oregon's defense would be in the top five in the country. Um, so if you look at the full season stats, I think you're probably doing yourself a disservice because this Oregon's team team is a lot different than they were earlier in the season. I'm really, really impressed with Peyton Pritchard. Uh, he has been really superb in their run here of late. Very good point guard, uh, good leader of this team. I like the zone press they throw out there. And I think to me, that's the biggest key to this game is can Oregon force Virginia turnovers from that zone press? Virginia has not turned the ball over much at all this season. And you wouldn't think that Virginia would be one of those teams that would just, you know, get careless with the basketball too much. But Oregon's forced a lot of turnovers from people that haven't turned it over that much in the past. Let's see if they can do it in this one. I think that's a real big key to this game is whether Virginia turns the ball over or not. I think it'll be hard for Oregon to score too much in the half court set. Maybe you see Oregon try to speed up the pace a little bit when they have the ball just because they don't want to go against that pack line defense. Let's see, you know, what do you think about the total though? 119, uh, you know, I've had people ask me about this one already. You know, what do you think about 119? Uh, this is a hard total. I, I'm going to pass on this total. I, I could not play the over in Oregon versus Virginia, but I'm not anxious to take under 119. It's such a low number. You know, uh, it's everything has to go right for it to cash when it's under 119. So I will pass on the total. I slightly lean to Oregon here, not, nothing strong. Texas Tech and Michigan, Michigan minus one and a half, 126, the total here. Uh, I'll, I'll look at the percentages here as I record this. 53% uh, of the bets on Michigan, 68% of the money on Texas Tech. So there's certainly some sharp money on Texas Tech here in this one. So, you, you know, when you look at this, you see the number one and number two ranked defenses in terms of efficiency in the country. Um, very, very good defenses. Texas Tech played a a noticeably weaker schedule than did Michigan. And that goes into my handicap here, certainly. Two great coaching staffs, really high on Chris Beard and John Beeline. Their whole staff, very, very good. Um, Beeline was thought of as an offensive mastermind a few years ago. Now he brings in some different assistants. They have some great defensive teams here last year and this year. 
And that's really been the difference to Michigan turning the corner and being so much better. They were already a good team, but now they're excellent on defense and still good on offense. Um, Texas Tech, very good on defense. Their offense has been rather inconsistent to me. You know, you look at a portion of that Big 12 slate, Texas Tech had some struggles on offense there in some of those key games. I do worry about their offense as to whether they are efficient enough to keep up with a really good team when they're playing against such a good defense. I'm going to go against the Sharps here and lean with Michigan minus one and a half. The Big Ten was such a good conference. I know the Big 12 is a deep conference. Uh, Big Ten has been so good here in March Madness. Don't read too much into that. But, you know, it's, it's something that you should note uh, and keep keep in mind at least a little bit. I think the Big Ten is a very good conference. The top of the conference pretty strong. Maybe nobody from this conference wins at all. But there are four or five really good teams here from the Big Ten. Um, Michigan, to me, is the, the way I would go here if I'm taking a side. Because Beeline and his teams have been a very, very tough out in March. Chris Beard, a tremendous coach as well. I think Michigan is a little bit more balanced than is Texas Tech. Texas Tech, very good on defense. Like I said, they played a weaker schedule than did Michigan. Michigan has a better offense than does Texas Tech. No home court advantage for either team here. I'll lean toward Michigan minus one and a half. And let, let's see what happens with this line. Maybe we catch a Michigan minus one. You know, there's definitely some sharp involvement on Texas Tech. Uh, so we'll see what happens with this line. But I, I do lean toward Michigan in this game. Follow me at Kyle Hunter Picks on Twitter. Follow at Bang the Book on Twitter. Subscribe to Bang the Book on YouTube for these videos. Give this video a thumbs up if you like the content. Certainly appreciate everybody that's done that already. The comments, I try to read over those as much as I can as well. Appreciate everybody tuning into this. Uh, I'll be back on Wednesday with a look at Friday's Sweet 16 games as well.